Hello, hi, my name is Susanda or whatever, and welcome to episode 3 of Inspired Life. welcome i hope that you like and subscribe and comment if you like what you see and if you're a regular welcome back it's good to see you, you look so beautiful today <laughs> i'd like to apologize in advance for the audio it's not that great because i kind of forgot to record the audio on my laptop when i was doing the screen recording as well so i just used the audio from my phone that i usually record when i'm filming because it just works as another speaker of mine so i'm so sorry i did try to fix it the best that i can but i promise you once you get into it it's fine so i hope you can find it in the bottom of your heart to forgive me <laughs> the person i interviewed this week is potsi motsepe he is also known as kick push he is a visual creator specializing in event and portrait photography and he's shot at events such as rocking the daisies and rage i'm not gonna waste any more of your time let's get into it I started it just like organically, just as a hobby. Yeah. Um, but I started taking photos with my phone and posting them on Instagram. And then it just sort of snowballed. People were asking me to shoot stuff. And I was doing it for free. I didn't even have a camera. And this November 2018 um, is when I started doing it full time. So it's only two years ago that I started it full time. But I just allow myself to be inspired, inspired by like stuff around me and people online. Funny enough, I don't actually like when I was when I was starting out. I had like specific photographers that I'd look up to and stuff. But now, um, I think everyone that's in the arts, like all kinds of arts, especially like film and music, like inspire me the most. I don't know if, if anyone's the same as me, but I'll I'll hear a song for the first time and I'll and in my head it will like turn into me wanting to shoot a video or shoot some photos like inspired by the way the song makes me feel so that's yeah. generally the process yeah <laughs> i don't know i'm very into like um nostalgic sort of vibe i don't know like i'd like photos that look like they were taken years ago and even like the videos that i shoot sometimes i just like to I don't know, I think, I think everything's about a feeling and I want to give that feeling of like remembering something. So yeah. Especially when I shoot, I edit it in a way that looks like a, a memory basically and not just, you know, I don't know, flashy. For me, it's just a feeling, hey? Because like the thing with, the thing that I'm, that I found with art is like, I can't tell people what, what the story behind something is, but yeah. I, I, my, my whole purpose is to make them feel something. And hopefully it's like similar to what I feel when I was inspired to create that piece of art. So it's more about feeling than it is about a certain aesthetic. Or if there's a message in my heart, then I'll definitely write it there. Like this is the purpose of this. But usually I just leave it up to interpretation. Yeah. Um, everything's relative. It, it usually helps to like, before we even go to shooting, to just like chat and you know, sort of get to know each other better. So you get to, you know, get a peek into their headspace. Yeah. And then once you know someone better, you know, you're more likely to know how they respond to certain things. So when, when I'm planning a shoot, I talk to the model or not just plan it by myself and then meet up and we shoot. Where, whereas we'll be like, oh, what do you think of this? What do you think of that? Run some ideas and bounce ideas off of each other. So that by the time we actually meet, if it, if it is the first time we're meeting, yeah. that we're really comfortable with each other. With each other and then it then it's like a natural sort of like collaboration instead of me telling the model do this and do that yeah just to like build that little relationship before you, you do the job yeah otherwise it can be i guess like relatively awkward and then it's like yeah. you don't you don't end up really getting what you want out of it and you're both kind of there like yeah. oh. i've had shoots like that before and it's like you know, it's like, don't know what to say. Which, and, then, <laughs> yeah, and then you also yeah. like, really don't awkward. know how to tell the person what you want yeah. them to do. Cause... Exactly. So I think it helps to like get to know each other and bounce ideas, plan the whole shoot with the person that you're doing it with so that it's, it's a lot easier to direct them when it, when it happens. Yeah. It takes a while to like 
first of all, you like need to have you need to be able to back up whatever you're charging. But what I did at first was just research like industry standards, and then I'd look for certain kinds of work, and then see how much they charge, and then ask myself, is my market willing to pay that much, and am I asking enough or asking too little yeah. for me to be asking that much? So it depends on each person, but I think there's there's I'm sure you can Google it. There's a there's a standard rate for for different kinds of art and freelance work in, in SA. So you can just work with that either higher or lower. I get surprised sometimes at the, the amount of people charge for, for some of the things that I do and I'm like Oh. I'm yeah. charging too little. <laughs> <laughs> I have standard prices for like standard things. Like I shoot for an hour, I have an hourly rate. Yeah. For the different sectors, so you get commercial and lifestyle whatever, whatever. But like for video work it's mostly it depends on the client's budget and I can quote them depending on how much work is involved as well. So we sort of meet meet in the middle somehow yeah. to consider that price, yeah. In photography in like twenty fifteen. Yeah. And like ever since then that's been like my main source of work is like events and festivals and stuff. So by the time I shot Rage last year, it was my second time. Ooh. And I, I actually quit my job the year before to shoot Rage because I didn't have enough leave days. But with with regards to Rage, everyone at the festival is just expecting to have photos taken of them. So when you work for the festival, everyone everyone's there expecting to have photos of them. You get like the odd one out of a hundred person people that'll be like, no, don't take any photos of you. Yeah. Because drunk or something like that. But generally people are people are open to having their photos taken. And also if you if you're not awkward about it, like it helps to have a couple of shots of tequila as a photographer and then, you know, join the party so yeah. you can take one of the photos. Because if you're standing there like you're shooting sports, people are gonna get a little bit freaked out and not not react to you positively so you want to be one of the one with the party like i i enjoy event photography because like how i experience the actual event is how my photos is how i want the photo to look and if i wasn't enjoying the event the photos are going to be trash yeah. so it's it's one of those things and i think people feel off of that energy as well Daisies last year were probably like the biggest one. Yeah. Like, there was a lot of work and I had like FOMO the whole weekend because I couldn't party because I was working constantly. But I think as an experience, like for as a photographer and someone who shoots festivals, I think it was great to like to work with like a team that that's managing this massive festival and it's like international scale and my photos are, are just popping up everywhere, all over the place. And I think that was like a great experience because it was like Okay, this was hard, but it's something I want to do, so... Yeah. I was an official photographer, so anything that needed photos took them, like, basically, photos of the lifestyle side of the festival, and then the actual artists and performances, so it was like those two. And it's the whole day for about three days, yeah. non-stop, day and night, and it's pretty cool. But other than that, yeah, I've, I've shot some, some pretty great things. I've worked with Usain Bolt. What? Well. <laughs> Crazy. We shot, we shot a, we shot a party that you were doing for for a champagne brand in Cape Town. Yeah. Last year, yeah, last year, and the after party as well. A man knows how to party. Um, yeah, it's. I think it's just natural that the more you do it, the more confident you are in your abilities. So when someone asks you to shoot something, you don't you only think about what's needed to to get it done and not can I actually do it, you know, like, so it's gone from there and that only comes with like doing it for, for a while. Yeah. So I've been doing it for quite a, quite some time and I think this, this, the confidence comes from there. Like I've done this before, then this is how I'm going to do this one. So it's not, it's not, it's not as scary or anymore unless it's like huge festivals that I haven't shot before or something like that, but yeah. I, I don't know, I enjoy it. It's, it's, a, it's a process. From, from when lockdown started or was announced, I knew I was going to have a lot of time for myself. Yeah. And well, all of the content that's been coming out is just basically a result of me practicing my craft, I guess. So 
I'll take photos around the flat of the cats and stuff. My girlfriend won't let me take too many photos of her. Um, <laughs> I take photos of the cats and of myself and whatever. And just keep keep creatively, you know, putting out work. And the photos and the presets are just the presets are <laughs> just the way I'm selling presets, just so that I can, you know, yeah. Table. Yeah. And the photos are just once I figured out that you could put your own photos on Instagram, I just taught myself how to do it and then when I put it on there I was just like, Well, I've learned how to do that and I think it was a cool thing because Yeah, I think it's it's point and it was kinda of just the whole process of I just wanna stay creatively active. Like yeah. I know a lot of people want to stay running and physical physical activity and stuff, but I just think I would have just sat in bed and watched Netflix the whole day for the last I don't know how long has it been? Two months? Yeah. <laughs> It's it's very difficult to to be able, especially in this in this market. Um, it's very difficult to do it full time. Like maybe you'll have special circum special circumstances and get like big contracts in the beginning and stuff. But there's like a balance between being a professional photographer and actually doing it to get paid, and then still doing it out of enjoyment and just to push your art. So it's very difficult. And if you can find the balance between those two, then I think you're fine. But for ed for advice for anyone who wants to start just literally just start and then do it a lot as often as you can don't don't be opposed to doing stuff for free in the beginning because the only thing that gets you paid in photography is people knowing who you are and if people don't know who you are no one is going to want to pay you and no one is even going to approach you to do the job so marketing is probably more important than <laughs> <laughs> than, yeah. than becoming a professional, I guess. Because I don't market myself as a professional photographer, but I think with the work that I've done, people can see, oh, there we go. So it goes hand in hand, I think. So yeah. just shoot a lot. Even if we have to like shadow people and do it for free, be an intern somewhere. The photos that you took are yours. Like, no one can take them away from you. Yeah. So, um, just, yeah, I have that backup of being able, to, being able to say that I can do this job. And then from there, more people will know of you and be willing to hire you. So thanks to Click Push for agreeing to do this interview. Thank you, thank you, thank you always. And his presets are available to purchase. They're in his Instagram bio link. So I've linked his Instagram and I've linked the presets down below in the description. And he also has filters on Instagram that you can play around with for your Instagram story to give you that nice nostalgic film look without actually using a film camera thank you so much for tuning in i hope on your way out that you'll hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't already and please comment maybe who you'd like to see and if you did find this inspiring bye